the bear market is back on. If it wasn't clear before last week, it's pretty clear now. Hey guys, I'm Chris Cimarelli, publisher of True Options Fasters. I've got our grandmaster options expert, Michael J. Carr, here today to talk about what we are seeing in the markets. Mike, I, I think if anyone had any doubts that we were going lower before last week, uh, it's pretty clear now. We're it looks like we're probably in for new lows, rapidly approaching new lows on all major indices. What do you see next? Um, can I share my screen and highlight a chart here? Absolutely. Okay, so yeah, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I do think the Fed at times has an agenda. Right now, they want stock prices to be lower. And there's a reason behind that. Every 1% increase in stock prices, according to their economists, leads to a 0.28% increase in spending. So if stocks go up $100, the average consumer spends $2.80 more over the next year. It's significant in the long run. And the Fed doesn't want that adding to the inflationary pressure. So there is a clear reason why they want prices to fall. Hey, that makes and, sense. My portfolio is down this year. I'm certainly spending a lot less. So yes. I think there probably is a correlation to there. I'm not saying I like it, but it does make sense. And it's called the wealth effect. So they named it, they've been tracking it. They finally isolated it 2.8%. That's pretty significant. And let's go back to the chart here. So in June, when the Fed increased rates 75 basis points, Powell said he was happy with the market. The market seemed to be understanding the Fed's goal. At the time, you can see stocks were way down and for some reason, traders decided that meant the Fed was going to start cutting rates in December. And we saw that shift in the options on, uh, I'm sorry, the futures on Fed funds, that traders for some reason started expecting a 25 basis point cut in December. And Powell didn't like that. So he was getting ready for his speech in Jackson Hole at the end of August. According to the Wall Street Journal, great reporting this week, and they do have great insider sources at the Fed. Powell had prepared a pretty long normal speech, like the chairman usually gives there, focused on policy, boring, not market moving. But he was very upset watching this rise in the market, and he got worried that the market was missing his message. So he tore that speech up. He'll give it again later, I'm sure. But he talked about how interest rates are going up and that's going to cause some pain. And he used that word pain, excuse me. We saw that word pain before from a Fed chairman in 1969, uh, when the Fed chair said there was going to be pain. What followed from that was a 13 year bear market. So the word pain has a lot of meaning for Fed chairman. Market sold off as soon as he said that. And up in Minnesota, the Fed president said, I'm kind of happy to see markets falling. People know that we're going to really stick to it. The Fed wants lower prices. They're going to get them. Yeah, I watched so, that speech when he gave it live. You know, it's been dubbed the eight minute speech that crashed the stock market. And it was pretty clear that he had an agenda when he was giving that speech. It was eight minutes long. It was very clear. We are not out of the woods. So we're not going to be out of the woods anytime soon. There is pain ahead. Everybody hunker down. The end is coming. Basically what he said. And of course, the S&P 500 fell 5% over the next three days. NASDAQ fell 7% over the next three days. And then like you point out here, we see the Fed presidents cheering him on saying, you did exactly, said exactly what you needed to say. It, it, it's very clear at this point, they want stocks to fall. And this should scare the living daylights out of everybody out there. And it should make it very clear. If they're expecting markets to achieve new highs by the end of the year, I know there are still some optimists that were out there who are thinking that. You've literally got the most powerful monetary institution in the country working against that. And the targets are pretty low. I mean, potentially S&P 500 here, or let's talk SPY, the tradable, it can fall to 300. And there's a reasonable argument for that from a technical perspective. 
if it hits 300, it's just going to keep going because that's going to be an important psychological level. So it is time to worry here that this bear market is going to be deeper and longer than most people want to believe. And the average bear market associated with the recession loses about 38%. So we're right on track there now from a technical and economic perspective. That's another 20% downside. It's kind of ugly here looking out over the next probably six to 12 months. Well, and and I, I think people, you know, the, okay, the average is 38%, right? But how many bull markets lasted 12 years? Not that many. So can we expect that the first proper bear market, 2020 doesn't count. Can we expect the first proper bear market after a 12 year bull market, maybe to be a little bit bigger than average? I think we should, especially with the Fed determined to fight inflation and inflation proving to be a tough enemy. Beginning in April, 2020, stimulus checks started hitting, new money rushed into the stock market. That line I just added, that green line, is the average cost basis for investors who got into the market since April 2020. So a lot of them, they enjoyed nice gains for a long time into January of this year. Then as the market started coming down, like a typical new investor, it's going to come back. It always comes back. Well, now they have losses. Last time we broke that line, we had a pretty quick sell-off. We just broke it again this week. We should be expecting next week in particular, because a lot of these are individual investors who went back to work now, and they're not watching the market minute by minute anymore. They're going to notice over the weekend, this is not good. And we can expect another wave of selling if history repeats, just like we saw back there in June. So I want to talk about the opportunity that lies in that because we are entering probably what looks like phase two of this bear market, where we might see a May 2008 style drop off where things just collapse. And if you're holding a specific asset during those times, you can make a lot of money. So let's talk about this, Mike. I know you haven't been recommending a lot of put options this year, particularly in your research service precision profits, but you're changing things up. Yeah, so as you know, I've been working on a way to find a strategy that makes money selling puts, and that's a hard thing buying to puts. do. Buying puts. Buying puts, right. I'm sorry. So we've been working on trying to find a way to buy puts with rules, not just, oh, the market's falling, now's a good time to buy put. That's easy to do. It's more accurate than most systems because the market has this upward bias, so it's very difficult. So after a lot of research and working on this, I did come up with, and this is an ugly chart I'm just showing for the research perspective, I, the arrows showing the signals. And these are short-term signals. We're not trying to catch a top and ride it all the way down. We're just looking at quick hit entries and a chance to take profit over the next month. And most of the signals work. That's unusual with the mechanical rules. And so the mechanical rules are basically based on the greed gauge. But it's, and I spent a, so much time analyzing this indicator. What I came up with was when it's statistically deviant from the average is a good time to look at the greed gauge for puts, especially when you're undergoing a dead cap bounce. So what I did was I defined what a dead cap bounce meant programmatically, and then just put this little strategy together. The results are pretty impressive. We did a trade last week. Um, it was a beta test to make sure we had the strategy Yeah, we down. just shared it with a few and, of us internally. Right, and yeah, two of us took the trade. We both made money, about 50% in three days. Wow. So it was a good trade. So last week, we shared our first trade with subscribers and I was a little bit too conservative and I'm sorry about that for those subscribers watching. Um, 
I set the limit price a little bit closer to the market than I should have given the volatility in the market. That's a triple digit gain as of today. So the signals are working and we're working out the tactics to get into it. But this is gonna be a great addition to precision profits in this current market environment. So you shared a trade with subscribers. The limit price was a little bit too conservative. So the trade didn't quite fill, but that trade went up triple digit gains in one day. That's Correct. exciting. Yeah, and so, so we're working on this, the tactics for how to set that limit price so that we can get in those trades in the future. I'm very excited to hear that you're going to start recommending put options. I love this greed gauge, by the way. And anybody who wants to see more about this, there's a video for it in the description box. So the greed gauge, you buy calls when it turns to green, you buy puts when it goes to red. I think that that's great. It's a very clear cut system that you've created. And I know you've been working on that bearish side of this for a while. And with, the, uh, with the, this pivotable, pivotal moment that we're seeing in the market right now, I think now's the right time to start doing this. You know, I mean, there, we've talked about some stocks that, you know, obviously all the Kathy Wood, all the growth names, they've all gotten murdered, right? But the market's only dropped about 20%. A lot of the market leaders, you know, Amazon, uh, Amazon's fallen quite a bit, but Apple, you know, Microsoft, Tesla, these are stocks that are still very inflated. And we saw this 20 years ago, 22 years ago, the selling in those growth names eventually moved into the market leaders. So now is an opportunity to really profit from this using put options with your system. And like you pointed out 22 years ago, those big names lost 90% or more at the bottom. So, and it's time to remember, stocks can lose 100%. They can go to zero. And I know a lot of the growth stock investors that have rushed into the market since April 2020 aren't aware of that. And they're being crushed in those big names right now. Hey, I traded those names for four years. I made a killing until this past December when the NASDAQ peaked. And then I had to switch things up. I've had to recalibrate. I've had to find some new tricks. And you know, for the longest time, I was not trading puts. I wasn't doing credit spreads or anything like that. Now is the time to start using some of these other strategies. I mean, we've got some people here at Bain Hill who've made fortunes trading puts. You know, Andrew Keen, I know he made $5 million in the financial crisis. Ian King, I think he made about the same at his hedge fund. I know he made an over 200% return in his hedge fund that year. These guys were buying puts. So, but this is really the first time in history when regular people have an opportunity to trade puts on mass. You know, they weren't really able to do that in 2007 and 2008. You know, the market was nowhere near as liquid as it was then. Options weren't as readily available to people as they were then. Now, I mean, this could be a very exciting opportunity. I, I'll tell you, when we're recording this right now, Mike, the market is down and my portfolio is up. There's no greater feeling in the world than that. It is the best feeling in the world. And I love that you're giving people an opportunity to do that. So if you guys want to check out the greed gauge, make sure you click the link in the description box below. That video was recorded during more exuberant bullish times. We talk about in that video how you buy on green and sell on red. Well, now we have the opportunity to place a second trade when it switches to red. Buy on red and sell on green, taking the opposite side of the equation with put options. There's a lot of stocks out there that have a lot further to fall. And with this strategy that Mike just shared for the first time in this video, you have a chance to do that. So Mike, do you have anything else that you want to share with us today? I see you've got another couple of charts pulled up. No, that's all I wanted to show okay. today. But we are, you know, what we, we have cleaned this up. So when we do send an alert, you don't get all of this. You just get a clear look at the last few signals. And this is, so this is plug power. Back. Yeah, this is plug power just a cluster there near the high. And these are the kind of, this is the kind of environment where you need different strategies. And we've been working very hard over the past few months, as you mentioned, to come up with this one. And then some spread strategies that we're using in market leaders. Um, that strategy over the last seven weeks, by the way, with a $500 margin. Um, so all you need to do is allocate $500 in capital to that. 
we have made over 40% return on investment. Uh, one trade a week generally. We missed one week, we had a loss one week, but 40% in just seven weeks. I'm really excited to see how that one plays out over the full 52 weeks in a year. I, I am excited to see that too. So 40% gain in seven weeks on conservative trades. So I've been buying a lot of credits. I, I know we want to wrap this video up, but I've been buying a lot of credit spreads this year as well. Um, since you and Amber Hesla both introduced them to me, I'm going to tell you, Mike, I made another thousand dollars Friday morning trading credit spreads on the queues. And now that it's clear that we're back in a sell-off, it's easy money. And it, it makes me feel good again. I'm back to making money for what feels like the first time this year by using some of these different strategies. So I do want to thank you for sharing them. I'm not taking the signals that you guys are sharing. Those are for subscribers, but it's really been teaching me a lot more about how to trade this market on my own. So keep doing what you're doing. I know it's helping me out. And I think it's a lot of other people out too. Thank you. All right, everybody. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you're reading True Options Masters every weekday at 11 o'clock Eastern time. And check out our video on the greed gauge below. We are running a special on it right now. You can get in for thousands of dollars off and you can benefit not just from the bullish trades when the indicator sees buying opportunities, but you can also profit from moments when the indicator and my system for it is predicting another move down in individual stocks. And it looks like stocks will be falling a lot further from here. That means there's a lot of money to be made from put options over the next couple of months, maybe over the next year. Again, this could be a longer bull market, well, or longer bear market, excuse me. So Mike, thanks for your time today and thank all of you for watching. Until next time. Thank you.